In this lesson, you are going to identify the kinds of matrices, differentiate the kinds of matrices from each other, appreciate the significance of the kinds of matrices. In our last session, we learned that, or we learned about examining vector norm rows. We learned that a norm refers to the overall length of the vectors in a space. We learned that there are different kinds of norm. These are L0, L1, L2, the P norm, and L infinity norm. We discussed that the function should, or the function norm should be used if and only if the properties are complied with. So we learned that L2 is the most popular norm. This is also known as Euclidean norm. It is the shortest distance to travel from one point to another. We noted that the calculation of the length of vectors is a part of a regularization method. If you miss lesson number seven, the link is given in the description below. Learning this lesson makes this lesson number eight more interesting. Okay, so we are going to study the kinds of matrices. So there are 10 kinds of matrices that we're going to discuss in this session and we will have them one, one by one for better understanding. Okay, so let's have the first one. The first one is what we call the square matrix. So let's write it here. So this is an example of a square matrix. And maybe you would ask me why this one is called a square matrix. So this is a square matrix because the numbers of rows are equal to the number of columns. So how many rows do we have? Let's count one, two, three. And how many columns do we have? So one, two, three. So this is three by three. So it's perfect. Three columns and three rows. So they have the same number of columns and rows. Now, let's go to number two. And number two matrix is what we call the diagonal matrix. Let's write it diagonal. So when we say a diagonal matrix, it is called a diagonal matrix if each of its non-diagonal element is zero. So let's first identify which of these elements are diagonal. So remember diagonal, we always draw like a slant line. So from the left going to the but bottom right, so we can identify the or the elements which are non-zero. So these are the elements that can be found in the diagonal of this matrix. And on somewhere else, we can find the zero values. And this is called a diagonal matrix. So sometimes a square matrix and identity matrix, which we will have later, can be a diagonal matrix if it complies with the requirement that a diagonal matrix have entries that are one in its diagonal and anywhere, anywhere else are zero. Okay, so maybe you would ask me, um, is it always a square matrix when we talk about a diagonal matrix, right? This question really makes sense. Of course, not all diagonal matrices are square matrix. It is possible to make a rectangular matrix. Say, for example, we can add here um, 0, 0, and then 0. Okay. But of course, we should not change our diagonal elements to be 0 all in all. Okay, so we can just add here zero here, but not making all of these zero because our diagonal elements would still be the same. So just from the upper right, just draw a diagonal line going to the bottom right. I mean, from the upper left going to the bottom uh, bottom right. Okay, so that, that is our diagonal matrix. Now let's go to the third matrix. So this matrix is called identity matrix. And this is denoted by this one. Remember our lesson? 
so let's write here identity matrix okay so maybe you would ask me what is an identity matrix so this is actually a diagonal matrix but what makes it different is that its diagonal elements are equal to one so let's go back here first in our diagonal it can be any number more than zero so one two three four five and so on and so forth but in this case the diagonal elements are always equal to one okay it's very simple then what about the fourth one what this one is so the next one is what we call the upper triangular matrix let me write here for better understanding upper triangular from the word triangle triangular matrix just from the word triangle so we could say that it really forms a triangle so what is this all about so let's examine this example for understanding of its properties so we have in here now as you could see we can find the number of zeros here I mean the the elements with our zero and it forms a triangle and if we are going to examine this part this part are all zero and the upper part is not all zero so that is why it is called the upper triangular matrix because we can find the non-zero non -zero values here but of course there could be some zeros like in this case but not all of them are zeros okay so from the diagonal going up remember that from the diagonal going up so see it's also like a triangle so we can find here the non-zero values and in here in the lower part all of the values are zero okay so the next example i mean the next kind would be a counterpart of the upper triangular matrix which is called the lower triangular matrix so this is just the opposite of this one so if we can find here the zeros in this case we can find all the zeros here in the upper part and the lower values are or have or has non-zeros or are non-zeros okay so that's it now let's go to our next kind which is called the symmetric matrix okay anyway let me write here so you can see in this lower triangular matrix always do not forget the triangle okay so upper zeros lower are zeros now let's go to the symmetric matrix so what is this this is any matrix that is equal to its own transpose so we could say that a so a is equal to its own transpose i sorry this must be a so it must be bold and it must be equal to its own transpose so what is this okay so as you can see here in this matrix a we have one two three three rows and four columns so this is the transpose of a so what can we see in here is that all the values in the column now become the row the first row so here for the first row for the second row for the third row and for the fourth row okay so that is the transpose now what about a skew symmetric matrix have I written the name oh, yeah okay so what about the skew symmetric matrix so this is the matrix in number seven let me write here first skew symmetric skew symmetric okay symmetric matrix what makes this matrix different from this matrix in this case 
so we the column becomes the row what about in this case are we expecting the same thing to happen of course it's a different case so, so as you could see as you could see in this example they have the f the same numbers right the same numbers uh never mind first the the negative sign okay so zero here is zero and okay this is the let's draw some lines so our eyes can really notice the transformation of the values okay so notice of course zero never mind zero there, there's only one entry so let's go to one and negative one so it used to be one here in the lower upper it's it's negative one so in a transpose it becomes negative one in the lower here in the upper it becomes one okay so we just assign the negative sign to the lower to make it transpose and the same thing that happens here okay so two then negative three of course we will never never change anything here okay what matters most is here outside the diagonal okay so negative three two two from the original negative two then three here it is negative two and then one here from the original two and the negative one and of course zero okay so that is the skew symmetric matrix okay so the zero matrix is our number eight matrix so what is this of course just by the name itself it is zero so what can we expect always expect that all the values are zero so in this case we have a three by two matrix so we have three rows and two columns so all are zeros then we have a row vector in a way let me write here zero number nine is what we call a row vector just by the name itself we can all we can only see a vector which is a row so this kind of matrix is consists only of a single row what about column when there's only one column what do we call that by the name itself of course we call this column column vector okay so it is consists of a single column only so in this case the matrix b one four three so in short as far as nine and ten are concerned we can say that a vector can also be a matrix what is this for why do we study this so let's have some examples of the application of matrices so matrices are often used in 3d geometry which is important in computer graphics for example a 4 by 4 matrix can represent a lot of transformations at once like translation rotation scaling and perspective or orthogonal projection a good example is taking a picture using a good quality camera this can save the captured image uncorrected along with a 3 by 3 color correction matrix to make the output better your computer will multiply this with the color correction matrix of your display then the same will be done by every pixel in the image and then it is put on your display so after all being said and done let's try this what are the kinds of matrices differentiate one kind from the other and why is our understanding of the kinds of matrices important don't forget to write your answers in the comment below do not forget to subscribe like and share please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session see you in the next lesson